the big one, big one, big one. Um. Mayday! 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 This is the Viking Sky! Mayday! 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 This is the Viking Sky! You okay? Yeah. I have 1,300 passengers and crew on board. Pitching violently at the height of a ferocious North Sea gale. My engine has lost power. We are 100 meters from rocks. A frantic distress call from the captain of the massive cruise liner, Viking Sky, as it founders perilously close to shore. This is the Viking Sky. We have injured and disabled passengers. It's like loud explosions, um, like bombs going off. Really loud bombs. Mayday! 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 I saw an angry sea. It was rough, it was grey, and there was white water. I wouldn't have survived in there. Tonight, terrifying first-hand accounts from Australians aboard the stricken Viking Sky. Frightened to death. There was certainly quite a lot of screaming. They presumed they'd be safe, but their dream cruise almost cost them their lives. Are you surprised that lives weren't lost? Very, very. It was too close. And this near tragedy has highlighted the failure of basic safety procedures aboard these floating cities. We are taking on water. As we'll discover, it's only a matter of time before there's a major disaster at sea. One as dramatic and terrible as the sinking of the Titanic. So how bad could it have got? You could have ended up with a thousand dead. For Sunshine Coast couple Stephen and Judith Metcalf, it was supposed to be a trip to help them heal. Stephen had lost his sister the previous month, and a cruise to see the Northern Lights was on their bucket list. And Judith, you got to see the lights? We saw yes, the lights. We had one night of seeing the lights. Mm-hmm. Were they amazing? Yes, it was, although to me, I didn't see colour. I saw them as white, whereas other people saw them as green. Yeah, I saw them as green, and they stretched right across the horizon. Four to five hundred metres from grounding and catastrophe. Gosh. Which was, uh... John and Jan Porter from Sydney's Northern Beaches are cruise veterans, but this was their first trip to Norway. What was the scenery like? We're going through the fjords. Oh, amazing. Amazing. But the waters of Norway can also be breathtakingly dangerous. The swell started to increase Saturday morning and um, very windy. We also had a lot of um, free frozen rain and, and hail. We were really going up and climbing the waves and going back down. So uh, it was very, very wild, choppy weather. Was it enough to worry you? I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I thought, oh, if this is as bad as it gets, that'll be OK. But um, it was just a little unnerving because it was getting bad quite quickly. And it got worse? Yes, it got a lot worse. Mm. By lunchtime, with the ship listing perilously, the engine suddenly cut out. We were in the um, cafe and I noticed that suddenly there was a loss of power, so the pizza oven lights went out, and suddenly a pizza came shooting out of the oven <laughs> almost straight at me. The windows are open, don't fall out. We didn't realise at that stage that we'd lost all four engines, but we were broadside to the swell, and that's when we really started to think this is very unusual, there's something going wrong. Did people start panicking then? Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was very frightened. We were on level seven and furniture started moving around. Plates were dropping. Be careful, that window's open. All the bottles were falling. The noise was horrendous. Uh, one lady was injured, an American lady, and it was quite traumatic. They thought 
they were going to lose their lives. There was a very large body of water which was sloshing backwards and forwards with the rolling of the ship and eventually uh, smashed that door in and you got the metre of water coming in and flooding that restaurant. So a lot of people were submerged and there's nothing to hang on to. Uh, you don't have any control and you're very entitled to be very, very frightened. So all of a sudden that safety drill, that drill you did with the sound of the truth. Yes. yes. That siren, you're hearing it for real. For real. We mm. thought, oh my gosh. This um, is it. This is it. This is real. And if it's seven, it means we're supposed to get to the emergency stations. Stephen and Judith were issued with life jackets and joined hundreds of others in one of the ship's restaurants. First water came bursting through that door, took some people out. What none of the passengers knew at the time was that the Viking sky was wallowing in just 10 meters of water. The crew dropped an anchor and eventually restarted one of the ship's engines. It was enough to stop it crashing onto the rocky shore. How close were you to the islands, to, to the rocks? Well, One report said 100 <laughs> 100 metres. But whatever too it is, close. it was too close. Too close. So how bad could it have gone? You could have ended up with a 1,000 dead. On a scale of maritime disasters, where would that sit? It, it would be described as being of titanic almost proportions. Retired cruise captain Michael Lloyd says it's nothing short of a miracle there was no loss of life. Worst case scenario, anchor's not holding. Blown onto the rocks. Then you would have had a lot of dead people. Uh, she could have been on the rocks in about 20 minutes. You wouldn't have got many people off. The elderly wouldn't have been had a much of a chance on board. And also, you've got to think of hypothermia. The water there is, is bloody cold. Uh, I think you've got some in the region of about 15 minutes, 20 minutes in the water. Would it be fair to say these passengers were very lucky? Yes. 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 No luck. You always need a bit of luck, you know. <laughs> in any emergency. <laughs> Unsure just how long the anchor and one working engine could hold, the captain gave the command to abandon ship. It was an incredibly slow process. There were just five helicopters for the 1,300 plus passengers. As Stephen and Judith huddled together, they texted their children back home. What did you tell them? Houston, we have a problem. So I thought before you see it on the news, we're going to be evacuated from the Viking sky by helicopter as one engine has stopped and the seas are huge. Eventually, 12 hours after the emergency siren first sounded, Stephen and Judith were ushered to the top deck. Describe the scene for me. Four o'clock in the morning, pitch black. All you could hear was the helicopter. It was very noisy, it was windy, the boat was rocking more because we were on the very top. Uh, and then it was one by one, they were lining us up and hooking us up and winching you up in no time at all. It must be important to you that you were winched up together as well. Yes. Yeah, that's right, yes. Yeah. yes. Yes, because we didn't realise they were doing to it. We, we were deciding who's going up first. Yes. But we yes. weren't I going said, to separate I and go on different like helicopters. Was go first. You I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was a surprise when they said, oh, well, you're going up in twos. And I thought, mm. oh, golly, that's a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> it's now 4.30 a.m., still waiting to get up on the helicopter to get out. The cruise industry is booming. But maritime experts warn that while the ships are getting bigger and more plentiful, their staff aren't experienced enough 
to handle crisis situations. We're okay, we're good, so far we're good. They believe it's only a matter of time before a liner goes down. Many of you saw that film Poseidon and everyone said, oh, that could never happen. Mm. You look at some of the sizes of these ships today. They're run by entertainment companies, really, not, not shipping companies. And they are on very strict schedules and there's so much money involved, right, that captains are possibly induced more into sailing today than they were in the past. It's big business. Very big business, very big money. Are you surprised that lives weren't lost? Very, very. Almost 500 passengers were airlifted from the Viking sky before a lull in the weather allowed the ship to be towed back to port. Yeah. For John and Jan... <laughs> we saw you on the boat. It's quite a tale to tell the grandkids. Was it scary? Oh, that's a great well, question. Well, it's very scary. I'm not the bravest monkey in the jungle. What would have happened if you fell in the ocean? I, I would have drowned, darling. <laughs> I could not have saved in that big, angry sea. You two have been through quite an experience together. Yes. How has that affected you as a couple? In 50 years, you have ups and downs in life. And you cope. You cope. Uh, as I say, he promised me everything including a helicopter ride in the North Sea. Yes, <laughs> so no complaints. Meanwhile, Judith is celebrating her 60th birthday. Cheers. Cheers. Happy birthday. <laughs> we, we did made it. it. We survived. We, did it. we survived the Viking <laughs> sky. <laughs> it's a milestone she wasn't always sure she'd get to see. So if we're in the pub in 10 years' time, how would you describe this experience? Oh, the most amazing life experience. Mm-hmm. I think our children are stunned that we yes, yes. manage the winching up by the helicopter. <laughs> That's exactly right, yeah. Oh, um, wow. And I think we'd look back on it and say, you know, wow, that was exciting.